Today we gather as a people of God, as the people of God, who profess belief in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, who is the Word made flesh, God in human form, Emmanuel, God with us, who was lifted up on a cross to die, lifted up in the resurrection from death to life, and lifted up to heaven at his ascension and return to God. In John's gospel that you just heard, Jesus never hesitates or questions the suffering and the death that he will endure. He tells his disciples quite plainly, the hour has come for the son of man to be glorified. Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who lose their life, those who love their life will lose it. And those who hate their life in the world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there my servant will also be. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. It's important to understand the narrow context of Jesus's words in these passage, especially the passage, those who love their life will lose it, and those who hate their life in the world will keep it for eternal life. The point is not that only those who live in deliberate poverty will be saved, nor is it the person that a person must perform the right kind of actions in order to be with God in eternity. Rather, this is a reference to our state of mind and state of heart. This is why Jesus uses this dichotomy of love and hate with respect to one's earthly life. Just as Jesus was not commanding people to hate their family in a passage from Luke, he, he's not telling us to hate our lives. Rather, he's saying that we ought to put 100% of our priority, our emphasis, our effort into the will of God, to set our minds and hearts on God and to follow Jesus's teachings. By contrast, those who want to cling to the world and the world's priorities instead of Jesus demonstrate that they love the world too much to be able to sincerely and truthfully follow in the ways of Jesus, in the ways of love. In other words, it matters what is written on our hearts. The prophet Jeremiah from the first reading tells the chosen people that the Lord will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. This covenant will be written on their hearts, not on their doorposts. The new covenant promises that God will be their God and they will be God's people. He says they will know the Lord in their hearts and in their minds from the least of them to the greatest. God will forgive them and remember their sins no more. God will write God's forgiveness and God's love on their hearts and remember their sins no more. Clearly, it is important what is written on our hearts. Are our hearts filled with love, concerned about our neighbor, concerned about the well being of all humanity? Or are our hearts cold and focused only on the things the world tells us that we should be focused on wealth, stuff, possessions? ego, prestige. What is written on your heart today and tomorrow and the next day? The Swiss theologian Karl Barth put it this way, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it on their hearts. This and this alone is the basis of love which is the fulfillment of the whole law. And God does this, God's law 
in virtue of which love is expected of us. It is the law of the gospel. What is written on my heart and on your heart this day? This week, our country, specifically the Asian community and people of Atlanta, experienced a horrific act of racism and gun violence with the killing of eight people by a lone gunman who bought his gun the very day that he went out and killed these innocent people. There's something wrong with gun laws to allow that to happen. Supposedly, he is a Christian and he justified his killing of these innocent people because of what he says was a sex addiction. His goal was to eliminate temptation and sin. Whether or not he will be charged as with a hate crime, the aftermath has brought to the fore the stories of violence and blatant racism that our Asian brothers and sisters have been increasingly experiencing, especially this past year. I'm not going to repeat the racist and vile names and words that have been spoken in relationship to the COVID pandemic. I know we've heard them all. And we know that words matter. Words have the power to heal, to soothe, to build up, to embrace, to give life. And words also have the power to incite hate and violence and even death. What words are written on your heart this day? There are other words that were in the news this week, words that were written in a story from the Washington Post. Many of you might've seen it, but it bears repeating. It's a story about a restaurant owner from Baltimore whose name is Stephen Chu. You see, he received an email on March the 11th from someone asking for a recipe. The email explained that a family member was dying and they want, they, the family wanted to make Chu's delicious broccoli tempura one last time because she loved that recipe. Chu emailed back and said, I'm gonna come and make it for her. And the family member said, but she's in Vermont. And he said, that doesn't matter. And so he loaded up his truck with all the supplies he needed. And he and his partner of business drove six hours to Vermont, parked in the woman's parking lot and started to cook out of the back of his truck. And not only did he cook the broccoli tempura, but he made other delicious dishes that he delivered to the front door of the woman's home where they both cried with his gesture of love and kindness. Chu said, she's such a lovely lady who has showered us with love at our restaurant for years. It was a powerful experience and I am happy that I could make it happen. And the only reason really that it was picked up by Washington Post was that Baltimore City Council member Zeke Cohen also wrote, I always point to choose restaurant, Ekabin, as a business that always models respect for community and treats people with love. Love is what was written on Stephen Chu's heart that day when he received the email and clearly was written on his heart as he drove six hours to make this delicious food for his lovely patron for her last wish. When love is written on our hearts, we will act with love. When generosity is written on our hearts, we will act with generosity. When peace is written on our hearts, we will act with peace. As the psalmist says, create in us clean hearts, O God, that are filled with love and renew right spirits within us. Amen.